Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to talk about Pandas data structure data frames. As you know, last video we discussed about series, how to create series, how to create series object, how to apply simple operations, how to access uh, NumPy, how to access Pandas. So in this video, we are going to talk about data frames. So guys, there is a very slight difference between uh, series and the data frames. Series are always one dimensional array. And data frames are always two dimensional arrays where the things can be modified also later. So it is a kind of 2D array uh, like we can have more than one rows, we can have more than one columns at a time and we can access um, mostly the same operations like we were performing on series, we can perform on data, uh, I mean data frames also. So series is like 1D array like I just can keep uh, in one dimension everything and I can apply the operations. In fact, I wanted to apply, I wanted to modify something that was again possible. We modified few things, uh, but this is data frame here. We will be learning like how we can access multi-dimensional arrays, how we can access uh, more than one columns and rows at a time. So I'm going to open a Google call it the same notebook, but this time I'm going to talk about um, our um, data frames like series and data frames are two different things. So we are going to talk about here, like how to create data frames just like we have created um, a series, uh, similar way we are going to create a data frames, only a slight difference like you need to understand uh, like how to create indexes, how to create um, um, the simple arrays and list so that can be taken up in data frames. So over here, guys, I'm going to talk about the very first example, like how we can use data frames. So just like, you know, series, I'm going to import pandas over here. First of all, I'm writing here import pandas as PD. I will not be uh, needed over here NumPy. So I'm directly going to design my dictionary or list or array, which I can take up into my data frames. So similarly, like we have done list or data frame or something like we just need to make a bunch of a data first, which can be transferred into series object and can be accessed. Similarly, I'm going to design over here a dictionary sort of thing where I'll be keeping my two records, my uh, two columns I'll be taking up with the data and then I'll be shifting it towards my data frame object, which I'll be accessing just like we were accessing our series. So let's start. I'm going to design over here a dictionary, very first dictionary, opening curly braces, coming over here. Now here I'm going to design my sections as well as a contribution, like how many sections and how much contribution I have taken. The same program we did in our um, series also, and the same we will be doing in our data uh, frames also, so that you guys can make a difference. So here I'm going to write over here sections, because this is my section. If you remember in our last series uh, question, we have created different section and different contribution and both of the things we have accessed, you know, uh, differently uh, with the help of series. But here in this data frame, I'm going to access together. So I'm going to write here section. Section will be my heading and I'm going to put over here my stuff inside section. Like what is stuff I will be needed in my sections. I'm writing over here a few section. I'm writing here like B. Second section I'm going to write over here is C. Next, I'm writing over here is D. Now, just like I have written the section, I'll be moving on towards the contribution, which I'm going to write. I'm going to put over here a comma. And in single in inverted comma, I'm going to write over here contribution means how much contribution I have done. This contribution I'm going to write column. And in square bracket, I'll be writing over here a 
contribution. So 6700 I'm going to write, then 5600, then 5000, then 5200. So this much contribution I have done, I'm going to write over here. So like this, uh, you guys can see like what I have done over here, I've designed over here a dictionary. So this is dictionary. As we know in data frames, we can uh, put up like more than one column and row at a time. When in series only one row at a time, only one column because that is a one dimensional uh, array kind of. So this is my dictionary I'm writing over here section guys, first of all. I'm putting over here A, B, C, D and then contribution. I'm writing all four different contribution over here. Now. This is my dictionary and this dictionary I'm going to move to my data frame. So how to design my data frame guys just like series I was designing my series S1, S2, S3 for data frame I'll be using over here DF1 is equal to. In PD means I'm having my pandas library available with me. PD is the aliasing over here. So PD I'll be using over here. Or if you want you can write pandas also but just for convenience I'm, I'm using over here PD because I've already renamed the pandas with PD over here. So I'll be writing over here PD dot data frames. Because my, you know, right now I'm not creating series, so I'll not be putting up over here series. I'm going to write here data frames. I'm not going to write here series because series I have done in my last class. Today I'm going to teach you data frames. So simply I'll be writing over here data frame. This is my data frame. What I'm going to put over here, I'm going to insert here dictionary number one. So this is my dictionary number one I've sent and I can print this thing now. So I'm going to print my data frame. So data frame name is DF1. This is all done. Just for review purpose, you can again see like I have imported pandas. I have renamed it as a PD. I have designed my dictionary over here. In dictionary, I'm keeping section, contribution, and then the entire dictionary I passed into my data frame, which I exist through PD, that is pandas, and, and given entire thing, like I have passed the entire thing to my data frame, that is GF1, and I printed the same. I'm going to run this line now. It is going to take some time as I've already told you everything is available on cloud, so it is little slow. If you want inside dictionary section contribution and um, uh, like, you know, scale or repetition, like the different columns are also uh, can be taken. Like if you want to add up some more columns that also can be done over here. So DF1, what is the problem over here? This again, we need to check. I'm going to rerun this thing. And here, actually, by mistake, I've written dict1, that is dictionary DICT. So whatever dictionary name uh, we are taking, we simply need to write the same. This is DICT. OK. Here again, I'm going to write dict1 because dict is a reserved word. So dict I cannot use. So I'm using here dict1 and I'll be writing over here again dict1. The error we need to find out. So here this code is working. What I've done, I've given sections, I've given contributions, and I could see the section and contribution here. So guys, I want to add some more things over here. Like I simply wanted to add some survey report here. And if I wanted to write here S-U-R-V-E-Y, and um, I need to add up some more things. Like I just need to add some survey report, means what the people are saying about this contribution. Is it fine? or correct or what. So I just want to give some grade to the contribution like A, B, B plus, such kind of grade also I wanted to give. And I'm saying uh, over here like B plus, I just can write again A and uh, here I'm writing C. Okay, so this is a kind of survey report. So let's see like whether I will be able to add some more of uh, fields over here or not. So yeah, here I can do. Now, if I wanted to add over here a good fair so is this is possible? So I'm writing over here in as, as a string. 
like I'm simply checking out whether the string is allowed or not. So I've already told you guys, if you wanted to learn programming, please practice, please implement whatever comes up in your mind, whatever question comes up in your mind, please try, please ask the computer system. So good, fair, excellent. Or, uh, you know, if I wanted to write a string, whether I can write or not. So what I'm doing in place of survey, I'm writing over here strings. That is good, fair, and it is working. You can see. So what I'm using, I'm using a dictionary. In dictionary, I'm taking up here section contribution and service. So this is the power of data frames, guys. Here you can see I'm not taking only one row and one column. I'm taking in more than one rows. I'm taking in more than one columns at a time, and I'm running this here in front of me. So if I wanted to take some more, for example, this is my dictionary one, and if I wanted to do some uh, changes with this dictionary, and I want to make one more dictionary, so that is possible. Here I'm writing dictionary two. In place of section, I just can write over here, like you know, survey. I can write over here, like uh, or um, I could say this is again section, like uh, some other grade. I could say maybe this is grade ninth and this is grade tenth section. So I can do like this. I'm having section. I'm having contribution. Some contribution I just can change. Uh, here I'm writing fifteen hundred. This is already excellent. This is again 1000 I'm writing and this is good. So I'm writing over here 2000. OK, so I have done with one dictionary. Now I'm going to copy this thing coming over here, pasting it here. And here I'm writing dictionary number two. So this is my dictionary two, but data frames to be should be different to DF1, DF2. I'm having two data frames. I printed first data frame and I'm going to print second data frame this is df2 so now what i'm going to do over here if i wanted to add a caption means this is for grade ninth i can say and here i wanted to give like this is for grade 10th so this is my grade ninth contribution this is grade 10th contribution control enter i can have like a, you know in this way also if you wanted to add a escape sequence in between guys that also can be done because definitely I just need to uh, get all these things in my next line so that it will be quite easy for me to read. Means I just need a readability. I'm going to run it again. So I'll be getting grade ninth and in the next line I'll be getting all these things. Grade tenth I'll be getting this contribution. So I'm going to get you know both of my grades contribution in this way. And if I wanted to add like this contribution in DF3, that is again possible. What I need to do over here is like you know DF1. I'm going to do DF1 plus my df2 so i'm already having you know data frame df1 is ready with me data frame df2 is ready with me and i've added both of these two things and df3 i have printed so if i want i just can print uh, you know in combination of grade 9th and 10th i just can merge and i can do it for example somebody asked me i just need to show grade 9th and grade 10th contribution so i just can do it df3 i can write and i can run it that is control enter so basically, you know, Python is all about data analyzing. Like if I'm having so much data, how in different way I can analyze, I can just rotate, twist, and I can see the result. So here you can see I'm getting in combination. Here you can see this is ninth and grade tenth. A, a, a combination like AA, you can see a total combination I'm getting. And whatever comment, whatever survey I have written, that I'm getting twice. So you know, such kind of operations also can be performed over here. So guys, it's a time to practice. Kindly implement two minutes to you. Now one more example I'm going to tell you over here. So let me copy the code. And I'm going to paste this code and I'm going to tell you one more example guys. So I'm over having over here dictionary means dictionary one, two, three and four. Now what I'm going to do over here, I'm going to write a program here to create a data frame for a list containing dictionaries of the sales performance. So I'm going to use over here sales performance of four different zoners, but I'm going to use over here list. So in place of dictionary in this example, I'm going to write over here a list and all list I'm going to add up and I'm going to show you in form of data frames. So guys, I have already imported pandas as a PD. I'm going to write over here zone. This is my zone A list. What I'm going to write over here. 
um, always remember like for list i'll be using here uh, curly braces i'm writing over here target this will be my main heading target i'm going to use over here and uh, i'm going to write over here the figure like how much target i'm having in my zone a zone a this is the target and i'm going to write over here sales means how much sales how much uh, sales i have done this i'm going to write coming out of it and i have done like 58 000. So I've actually crossed the target. You can see I have achieved the target. I'm going to copy this thing. I'm going to come back and I'm going to paste for all four different zones. So this is for my zone A. This is for my zone B. This is for zone C. This is for zone D. So I'm having all four different types of zones and uh, there are different targets. I'm going to write over here like, for example, this is 58. This is 56. This is 59 and achieved achieved a target also i'm going to write over here this is 50000 i have written so i'm having four all four different zones i'm having and sales i'm going to make again a list and inside sales i'm going to keep all these lists whatever i'm having so what i'm going to do over here is i have already created three different four different zones you can see four different list and i'm going to keep all these lists inside my sales like i'm having zone this is a little correction is required over here. This is zone and uh, this is again zone. This is again zone and I'm going to write over here zone like all four zones. I'm going to cover over here the zone A then comma. Then I'm going to write over here is control space. I'll be getting over here zone B comma. Again, I'm writing here zone and then control space with the help of control space. Um, you know, you will be getting um, in, in the list like optional list you will be getting. So instead of writing, we can select also say so ABC and this is my D. So I've selected all these four zones. So this is again a kind of like I'm having sales and inside sales. I'm having all, all of my zones over here. So guys, what I'm going to do is I'm designing here a sale DF means data frame of sale. I'm going to design here. And I'm writing definitely PD dot data frame like we write always PD dot data frame. If you want, you can press control space also. So you will be getting an option also data frames. Now in this data frame, what I wanted to give because I'm having everything inside sales. I'm having all my zones inside sales. So I'm writing sales and an index means I just want at the top. What I want at the top, this I'll be writing what I want at the top. So I want at the top the name of all zones. So I'll be writing over here zone A. So this is the caption. Whatever you write over here, that will be printed at the top. I'll be writing over here. This is my zone B. And uh, this is my zone C. And um, this is my zone D. So I've written over here A, B, C, D. All four zones I have written over here. Coming back to my next line. And I, I everything is done and saved in my sale DF. So I'm going to print over here sale df so this is sale and df this is control enter key i pressed and i'm going to get my answer in few seconds now oh i have got my answer so you can see now guys i am having target and sales this is different all four different sales zones so it is not compulsory like because you have written over here zone a so you have to write here also zone a no if you want you can write here only abc also because this is the caption this is the thing what you wanted to print at the side so if you wanted to print a b c d like I'm printing over here. So you can print anything, whatever is coming up in your mind. So this index is your time. Is This index is your space, what you wanted to print to your left hand side. And what items I'm going to keep, I'm keeping in sales. You can see I'm having zone A is ready, zone B is ready, zone C is ready, zone D is ready. I'm having all, a lot of stuff inside. I've given everything to sales and I've given sales and I've given, I've attached the index and I run this out. So this is again an amazing example of this data frame. So this is uh, like, you know, you have we have implemented here data frames using a list. So please practice two minutes to you. Now, in the next example, what I'm going to tell you is like, you know, using areas also data frames can be implemented, guys. So I'm going to click over here code. This is a third example of data frames where I'm going to implement areas. Definitely, I'm going to import pandas first of all, and I'm going to import here NumPy also because Eric won't be accessed with the, without the help of NumPy. So I'll be writing over here import pandas as 
pd and import numpy as np i'm going to come to my next line what i'm going to write over here i'm taking up here as a array like a single array i'm going to take here and inside my array i'm going to pick up i'm going to keep some data in my array so i'm coming over here this is my array and uh, you know i'm just going to keep like two two values together like this i'll be doing like this so you know this is my array set so i'm just going to keep over here 11 12 this is 12 and here i'm writing like 13 comma 14 here i'm writing 15 comma 16 this should be 15 okay and now uh, one two and three i'm having three now next what i'm going to use over here np dot int int 32 int int 32 now why i am taking this thing this i wanted to explain why i am taking this thing because i am having all three values and i wanted to tell you like how to create arrays and how to use it this is my int 32 this is like a, a kind of integer only we have a different types of integer available over here so it is a kind of integer but you know while i'm reading my array i just need to use over here np dot array i'm going to use control space i'm going to press here np dot array i'm going to use now what is going to happen guys this will be considered as an array and while you're writing np dot int 32 i just wanted to show you the results so that you will be able to understand in a much better way why i'm writing this thing this is my df4 data frame 4 definitely i'm going to use my pd dot i'm going to write here data frame I've pressed control space so that I'll get a ready-made stuff with me. And I'm writing here ARR1 because I'm having all my stuff in ARR1. Now, once I have written, I just need to print my DF1. So simply I'm going to write over here print and I'm writing here DF4. Control enter key pressed together. Now, just see guys what is happening over here. I imported pandas. I imported a uh, numpy. With the, yeah, here I'm having my stuff. So I'm going to scroll it down so that I can show you the output. So the moment I'm writing 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, np.int32, I've imported everything and I have printed. So I'm getting, you know, 0, 1, 2, 3. I'm getting all my stuff and class numpy.int32. What is happening with the help of this? Like, you know, uh, my array, I'm using over here array instead of list and dictionary. I have created a simple array and I've kept my stuff and I've used it. Now, if you are not writing, like if you are writing np dot int32, int32 int means you will be getting a default value of this thing. If you're writing a value, then it's okay. You will get a value. And if I'm not writing anything, like if it is not a number, for example, if I'm simply writing over here, it is not a number. And then also I just can write over here. For example, this I have written. It is not a number. Not a number. All right. So, you know, with the help of this, I just can find out whether it is a number or not. Means if I'm having some not a number sort of value. So we have so many functions available in Panda uh, with the help of which I'll be able to know whether I'm having not a number or not. Like df.4, I just can access over here dot has an a n s. I'm simply finding out whether I'm having not a number value or not. Like I have inserted over here, I'm having not a number. So I'm simply going to check up here whether I'm having not a number value or not. I'm going to run it. Here what I'm getting guys, like this attribute is not possible with me. This is N A N S. So here I'm printing DF4. What my DF4 is printing, it is giving me all the values. So I actually don't want it to check up here whether DF is having, you know, not a number value or not because I'm already having this not a number at the end. So what I'm doing, whatever values I'm typing over here, if anything is not a number, if anything is not readable, so that will be coming up as not a number if you're writing an int32. So np.int32, so you will be getting a default value of int32. Instead of np.int32, I'm just wanted to see like how many things I'm having over here. See, I'm having int. And instead of 32, what all the things I'm having here? 
see i'm having int 64 also so if i'm writing int 64 np dot int 64 what i'll be getting again zero i'll be getting so that means i'll be getting a default value over here so what i have done guys we have implemented data frames using arrays using list and using dictionaries so all these functions uh, we have like like whatever we have done in series the same kind of functions like we have here in data frames also so different types of data frames the different types of operations can be performed like if i'm having df4 if i'm doing like this so i just can make here one more data frame df6 is equal to pd dot i just can do this much also like this is again possible let me tell you what all the possibilities like if you want to access you know i have given over here array but i just want to apply some more operations here so i'm having two data frames actually i'm having d4 and d6 and i'm writing here df7 is equal to and df4 divided by df6 i am having guys df6 okay and i am coming back to my next line and here i wanted to print df7 so i just wanted to see like whether this is possible or not guys whether we will be able to divide two different arrays or not whether the things are possible in this way or not so right now i am what i am having in my uh, arrays like i am simply having the values values and 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 the values is given in two different formats so i just wanted to check what i am having in my last zones so i'm just going to do this thing with my sales so let's try with sales i'm writing over here i just can write over here sales also because i am having sale as a list also available with me so you can see here i'm having sales so i'm dividing df4 or i just can divide sales with my another sales because i have already told you i'm having so sales i'm having zone two different zone so zone a and zone b also can be divided or two data frames also can be divided so this is again possible so instead of writing this thing i'm simply going to copy and i'm just writing over here one more thing and uh, i'm just going to write over here this is array 2 and i'm giving one of uh, the data frame i'm giving array 1 one, one of the data frame i'm giving array 2 and i'm simply going to add this uh, thing like df4 plus i'm to write here df6 and i'm adding and giving to df7 and let's print what will be happening now okay so now i'm going to tell you like instead of data frames if i wanted to interact with my series and uh, if i wanted to uh, wanted to design so many series and if i wanted to put it into data frame that is possible or not so this is again one last example i'm going to tell you with the help of which uh, like series and data frames difference will be clear to you so i'm just going to write over here first of all because i wanted to import someone to import over here as pandas as pd and next line i'm going to write here like import um numpy as np so i have taken both of these two things quickly i'm going to design over here first of all a staff because we know uh, that i'm going to design here series so pd dot series first of all i'm going to write control space 
this is series so i'm designing one series for staff and i'm designing you know uh, one series uh, for for salaries like a uh, staff is getting what uh, staff is what is what the salary staff is getting so i'm going to write over here round brackets and inside i'm going to write here staff like i'm having 20 30 60 this is the staff or uh, this is the 50 30 50 30 and 60 i'm going to write over here staff next i'm going to make a series for salary is equal to i'm going to write over here pd and pd dot series i'm going to write and now this time i'm just going to write over here the salary like what salary they are getting so i'm simply writing over here some salary so this much salary i have written this is the salary what they are getting maybe okay this is just a estimation i have written over here now i am having you can see guys i am having same series like same kind of uh, nature same kind of data structure i am having in both of my series of staff and salary so if i wanted to find out the average that is again possible we have in fact done this thing in our last session but how to put this up in my data uh, in my data frames just we are going to learn to so staff i have divided with the salary so i'll be getting an average and now i'm going to design my organization my org um uh, field also i'm going to design over here what i'm going to put over here in org i'm writing here people i'm simply designing some index and some values so i'm writing here people i'm having some people and uh, who are staff so i'm simply designing like how much salary they are getting in amount i'm going to write like how much salary they are getting so what i'm writing in double inverted comma that is my caption so whatever you want to write that you can write that will be presented at the top like the heading i could say next amount i'm going to write over here like the salary what they are getting in place of in in uh, like in front of amount i'm going to write what salary they are getting i'm going to put over here the comma and next thing like average also i wanted to give avg and column and i'm going to write over here avg so what i have done uh, i've simply divided also the thing and i've got my average also which i'm going to show over here that the average so same average will be shown at each and every time and this org i'm going to give it to my data frame final so this is my dff data frame final and uh, what i'm going to write over here is pd dot and i'm going to write here like data and frame this is my data frame so i'm writing a df is equal to like pd dot data frame i'm opening round brackets and this org i'm shifting over here and i'm going to print this dff so this dff i'm going to print dff and i'm going to run this out control and enter key pressed together now you can see like you know data frames can be interacted with the, uh, with the series also so this is the one very main in example you can say where i'm using my series as well as my data frames so i've created two to three series two series i have created and i'm doing something and i'm inserting it to my data frames and i'm doing all my work over here so if you want you can add some more uh, field also so this is how you can interact with your data frame this is how your data series can be i mean the series can be interacted with data frame so 2 minutes to you kindly implement next thing guys we have a uh, few more thing just like in series we have done we have so many operations so just simple we put dot and we can do multiple operations in data frames also we have uh, different kinds of operation like if i wanted to know the index i just can do it if i wanted to know the index so dff dot index you will be getting over here like what is that index dff dot columns like how many columns i am having in my data frame i'll be getting with the help of this function that is dff dot columns next i am having dff dot axis a x e x a x e s so i'll be getting the axis means how many axis i am having over here next i am having dff dot d types so d type means the data i am getting over here means how many data types i am having this i'll be getting so control enter key i'm going to press and i'll be getting over here the data types so these are the short functions if i wanted to know the length of my um, of my dff so this also can be done so if i wanted to know the uh, for example if i wanted to know uh, like what is the length of my uh, data frame so this is also like uh, can be done very easily so i'm writing a len length function and i'm writing a dff so with the help of which um, like with the help of this i'll be able to know the length like what is the length you can see my length is 3 so this is like a, a wonderful 
helpful thing uh, you will be able to know the count also like count means d f f dot c o u n t count so you will be able to count the number of records how much you are having like the rows record and everything you will get to know if you wanted to start counting from one so you just need to write in double uh, in just round bracket like one so you will be able to know like how much counting is there but you need to write over here one we have a transpose function also available with us d f f dot simple a big t a capital t d f n so you will be able to know the transpose means everything will get rotated your rows and columns columns and rows everything will get rotated so this can be done if you want you can see in form of tables like see everything is visible to me in form of table so my index is like 0 1 2 which i was uh, viewing like towards my left hand side it is visible at the top and my all fields like people amount average is available at my left hand side so this is uh, you know a wonderful function which you can use over here in in your data frames so what we were using in series that is also available in data frames so two minutes to you guys kindly implement And I just wanted to see, like, if in DFF also I could slice, like, uh, I was slicing inside series. Is the slicing is available here also? Like, can I slice over here also if I wanted to know? So I'm simply going to press Control Enter key, and yes, I can slice over here. Like, if I don't wanted to see my entire data frame, if I wanted to slice down into different parts of first row, second column, second row, first column, top three column, all these things uh, are also possible. So I'm writing here DFF dot. I'm having you know slices like different ways um, uh, one under uh, column and uh, I'm going to control and then keep press together and here I could see like I'm getting two slices two two records are available uh, with me so this is a kind of you know a function which you can um, uh, can can access so we can access like we can slice down into different ways one is to two two is to two zero is to two so multiple ways we have like if I wanted to slice anything. Two rows, three rows at a time can be done. So kindly implement. Two minutes to you once again. I'm going to access over here head also and let me see whether head is available or not here. Head, I just wanted to see whether head function is available here or not. Yes, I got head. And if I wanted to pick any three top three rows from my head, this is again possible here. Yes, I can do this much. DFF means I'm having my data frame and from tail. Tail means that the top, uh, the last elements. So head means top elements. Tail means last element, last two elements. I just wanted to view. And uh, definitely, a caption is also available. I'm going to press over here, Control Enter, so that I could see like uh, what is the tail and what is the head. If you wanted to write over here, caption guys, yes, of course, you can write here a caption. I'm writing here, head. That is my head, and I'm going to write over here, tail means all the things can be accessed uh, as per the function. And I'm pressing Control Enter key together. I'm having head and tail. So uh, you know, this is just a caption I'm writing over here. But definitely, this is a function, so I should not feel like I just will be able to put over here function because this is a function. But we have a solution. I'm going to print over here an option so that the things can be accessed accordingly. I'm writing here that I'm going to access head, and here I'm going to print like I'm going to access tail. So we have all the things are possible here. I'm going to run it. That is Control Enter. So I'll be getting a heading that is head, and I'll be getting a tail, and I'll get to know like how much tail and how much head I'm having. Say so if I'm not using any number inside, what will be happening? Like I'll get to know how much head and how much tail I'm having. If you clicking over here, so you will be able to see in form of table. Show 25, show 10 means or or if I'm having so many records, uh, it is for those purpose. Like if I, it is for that purpose, if I wanted to view five records at a time, ten records at a time. Like that. So this is all about data frames, guys. Last class we have done series. Today we have completed data uh, frames. This is amazing thing. What you need to do, you just simply need to see your book exercises. 
and you need to practice all these things it is very simple i've already told you series means one dimensional data frames means two dimensional uh, multiple things can be um, Uh, uh, can can be can be uh, collected means to gather like 2d array you can say and series is just like a 1d array where only one record one column at a time can be accessed so good luck to all of you kindly implement and um, don't forget to attend my next lecture thank you